Welcome back to the Alaska Huskies franchise. We met the team in the last episode, and since these guys have never played together, exhibition games are a must-do. Practice only goes so far, man. I mean, listen, we are talking about practice. Especially when your own teammates want to just lay into you. So we're staying somewhat local and partnering up with the WHL, the Western Hockey League, to play three friendly matchups against one another. And if all goes well, we'll take on a mystery NHL team to close today's Huskies action out. Let's give a little backstory about the WHL. What is it? It's basically a hockey league that's made up inside Western Canada and the upper northwestern part of the United States. They're pretty much not associated with the NHL. Now, these guys can get drafted in the NHL draft, so kind of think of it like the independent leagues in baseball. They aren't directly tied to the NHL, so they're not their minor league teams, per se. They're not like AAA, AA type of affiliates with the MLB, so to speak. And they usually do consist of some pretty good young talent. The official title of the WHL is a Major Junior Hockey League which usually means that they've got players aged from 16 to 21 years old, which conveniently most of our Huskies fall within that age range. Despite, of course, our older guys like Hemingway and Kinnick and, of course, this guy, Juice Boxer, there's, there's just no way that that's your real name, dude. And there's also no way that you're not over 50. I digress. The Huskies are going to take on the Kamloops Blazers first, then the Seattle Thunderbirds, and then the Prince Albert Raiders, the most recent WHL champions, Last season and this season were actually canceled due to COVID concerns. And this is going to be a bar test, really. This is what it really comes down to is how good is this team actually? And somewhat noteworthy is that former Coyote, Shane Doan, is actually one of the minority owners of the Kamloops Blazers, along with former competitors to Vasky during his own playing days like Mark Recchi, Jerome Ginla, and Daryl Sador. So, you know, vasky has got those nice little connections. You know what I mean? So heading into these games, we asked Peter Vasky what he thought about the situation. Quote, We're going to find out what this team is truly made of. All the scouting, all the behind-the-scenes work with these guys to get them ready for the big stage. I think they're ready. Being young players, we know that there's going to be some jitters in there. There's going to be a lot of growth left to happen individually. But let alone with the team, we got to know how these guys are going to be able to play with each other. And we have to be patient. But we're also excited to really see what these guys can do. So I'm anxious to see what players are going to be taking the opportunity to stand out above the rest. Which guys want it more, which guys have the fire and a competitive drive to be the best on the team. That's what we're really looking for, to tell you the truth. And with that, it's time to finally get it underway, guys. The Alaska Huskies at home taking on the Kamloops Blazers. Should be a nice matchup, could be a good game. I'm hoping that we can get a W here. This is going to be CPU versus CPU. No user control in this game. And just to get a feel. Got to get a feel for how these players are going to play with each other and what the what lines are going to be mixed together to get the best output on this team. So right off the get-go, the Blazers will win the face-off, but that's a nice save there by Isaac Lopez. And cutting up the middle is, again, another shot. And then right off the post, Isaac Lopez hangs with it and makes multiple saves on that scoring chance, or scoring chance is, I should say. Let's jump a little bit forward here in the action, and we have another shot, another shot. Back to back right there, right off the get-go, and Isaac Lopez is getting peppered, but you know what? He looks like he's standing cool and collected back there in the crease, and he's making these Huskies fans proud of their goaltender. Nice shot there, good attempt, and some good, really good defense there by the Huskies on the other end, pushing it back up the ice. A little turnover here at the corner, and we've got Lazendal taking it up, skating it back up. Trying to set something up, and he's going to try to take it himself, but takes good contact here. But take a look at Fedorov. Boom! Big hit on the board, setting the tone, and it will be an offsides call. As Kamloops trying to bring it back up the ice, but really good defense by the Huskies. Here's a chance for Taylor. Jet shoots! Misses just wide of the goal, and that was a good scoring opportunity. But really, again, good defense by the Huskies. Barnaby tied his man up, but... Here comes Pilar trying to get a shot off. And again, good defense by the Huskies Blue Liners here. So about 12-18 left to go. Here's John Borhoft. He's going to try to make some moves, but he draws a penalty. That's going to be Anchorage's first power play attempt. Keep in mind, ACH, Huskies Arena, Anchorage. We're not the Alaska Huskies quite yet, so we had to adopt the city name first before we can actually become the Alaska Huskies. So these WHL games are very important. Because again, a part of Gary Bettman's deal is that we have to prove ourselves as NHL quality 
before we can enter into the league. So that is why you see ACH, Huskies Arena, all this stuff, this unofficial name, unofficial naming at this point. Power play is going to go by the wayside. We can't get anything done, but here with nine minutes left, Taylor Jett's got an opportunity. He's going to get his own miss in the corner and then take a look at the power moves by Taylor Jett coming on in and scoring the first ever goal in Huskies franchise history. Unofficially, of course, because we're not Alaska yet. We're not in the NHL, but that's going to count just the same. Taylor Jett, the first goal ever for this squad, and he's got to feel good about it, man. He's got to feel real good about it. one nothing Anchorage at this point. Six minutes and 34 seconds left to go. Here comes Seth Colley passing to Lasnadal. Going to get two shots off. Can't bury the second one home, but the opportunity was there. Let's jump here to the second period. It's about 17 minutes to go here. And again, good defense all the way around by the Huskies Blue Liners. It's Fedorov. That's, I believe, Hemingway is out there as well. And now we take a big hit. Here's Regalwood. He's going to try to get this thing going here. Takes a shot off the post. He was going up top shelf there on the glove side and just missed a little bit. That was a really nice shot, though. Here comes Pilar and a nice defensive play yet again by these Huskies. It's Fedorov back there. Man, I just I love the defensive pairing that is going on here with these Huskies. They've got it really going on. Take a look at Taylor Jett, though. He's looking for goal number two. Moving on in. The shot almost gets his own rebound. And here comes Barnaby with the shot up the middle. That was Borhoft and Barnaby together. They're going to draw another penalty. So here in the power play, still 1-0. We're going to skip ahead about 15 seconds to go. Here comes Trenton Grell moving on in. The shot is just off a little bit to the left side. Here's Grell again, passed to Konstantinov. Konstantinov back to Matthew Hawk with the big shot, but it's going to be saved. Rebound goes to the right. Got him tied up in the corner here. Got some good pressure. Here comes Grell. Trying to find somebody open in the back of the net. Here comes Hawk. Nice pass to, to Aiden Oliver, actually. Aiden Oliver with the shot. Barnaby chasing him down in the power play. We put a lot of pressure on Kamloops there, but it does go by the wayside. Can't get another power play goal. Still 1-0 here. Here comes Kamloops. Another big hit. Huskies defense is... Just laying into people. That's Jusuf Konstantinov. Take a look at Barnaby with the power moves back here. Take a look at this guy, man. It's just a big body back there. Here comes Aiden Oliver. He's got an open shot. Wide open scores! What a move! Aiden Oliver. His first goal, and it's now 2-0. Anchorage. Wow, with the beautiful backhand right there. The fake to the forehand, then to the backhand. That is a beautiful, beautiful move by Oliver, 2-0 Huskies, nice save by Isaac Lopez, it looks like we are getting ready to end the second period, but hey, we've got another chance here, Taylor Jett almost snuck this in, that's a nice little fancy move there, if you fake like you're going to the backhand all the way, and then do that, that's awesome, Miles Kinnick with the huge hit, Miles the Clinic Kinnick, Woo! Huskies bringing the heat, and they're opening action against the WHL, man. Take a look at this move again by Aiden Oliver. Just he, he backs his man down and then comes back in. And wow, forehand to backhand. Just a tough, 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 tough go if you're the goalie, for sure. Here's Taylor Jett. Missed opportunity here. Got another chance, but the goaltender will rest it. He'll freeze it. Got a power play opportunity again, guys. And you can see the penalty here. Just interference. You know, he's got to be able to come back to the puck, you know, you gotta have, you gotta give the the guy a chance, here's Jusuf Konstantinov, a big slap shot here, had an opportunity on that power play, trying to get a goal for himself here, but here's Matthew Hawk, he could take the shot, but no, he sends it to Oliver, who gets another goal, goal number two, this guy's got so much finesse, I think he's one of these guys that Peter Vasky's gonna be looking at and saying, hey, he's showing us something here today. Take a look at this. This is a nice pass by Matthew Hawk. We had our concerns about Matthew Hawk, thinking that he might be a guy that might be a little bit selfish. No, man, he found he had an opportunity to get that slap shot off, but he takes it to Aiden Oliver, who is youngster. He's hot. He gets the goal, and with only about 30-some-odd seconds left to go, man, Isaac Lopez almost, almost gets the shutout here tonight, but that is 
Not going to happen. Just not very good defense there by Fedorov, number nine right there. Really got to you got to stay in your position. You got to stay in your lane right there. You know, he, he got caught a little bit, kind of moving in up center. Yeah, you got you got to stay trying to help your goalie out there a little bit. But good win, man. Really good win against Kamloops. This is a well-storied franchise in the WHL. And it's just a good win, man. It's a real good win. We, we played with some fire tonight. We played with finesse. We played with some power. I like the balance that we have with this team, at least what I've seen so far in the early goings. But we've got two more games against WHL action. We've got the Seattle Thunderbirds and then, of course, the Prince Albert Raiders, which is going to be a tough test because, as mentioned, they were one of the teams that are recent champions, recent WHL champions. Here's your box score, your player stats. Let's see what everybody's got. Hawk with the assist, Grell with an assist, Chapman with an assist as well. Got a lot of pluses in there, not a lot of plus minuses. I like to see that, but Von Regan did not play today. Isaac Lopez, 17 of 18. And you know, normally you see guys that get about 30 shots against them in a game, maybe upper 20s. That's normal, but when you've got 18 shots against you, that means your defense played absolutely lights out in that matchup. Corey Jaguar is going to get the start here for us tonight against Seattle. And we've got our gray uniforms on today because, again, we just we, we were feeling it. Might be thinking, don't change it up. Keep it going. Keep the momentum going. And we are. Taylor Jets, another close quarters goal. This guy, he's got such an ability to be, to have so much maneuverability with the skates, right? He knows how to, he's an he's Olympic figure skater. He knows how to get in close and make moves. I mean, you guys saw what he just did. He put the brakes on, got the guy spinning the other way. First goal of the game goes to him. And then here's Seth Colley. Make it snappy with the snipe. Woo! Gotta love it, man. Our offense is on fire right now. Seth Kali from Lasnadal and Fedorov. Now, you'll see that uh, Kali has the C on today. He's got the captain. He will not be our captain. I'll do, give you a little spoiler here. He will not be our captain. But for exhibition purposes, we got to have something going like that. Got to have the sharing captain, sharing assistant captain labels for each guy. So still first period, man. 16 minutes left, and here's the first shot attempt against Corey Jaguar, and he makes an easy, easy stop. Here comes Ludwig, another attempt, and a good defense, defensive play there, and another big hit. Huskies bring in the pain, man. Here comes Lasnadal, another shot. I want to see him get those shots a little higher because he seems to like to shoot low often, very often. But I do want to see him kind of do that and, uh, and get that game of his game going so here is another opportunity for Lasnadal he's gonna try to break in with a backhand that's a beauty but just couldn't quite rattle it home here's Fedorov keeping the puck back in Kali moving on in to Jet had another opportunity but a good save there by Milicic it still remains two to nothing here's about four seconds to go and here comes the Thunderbirds with a nice shot on Corey Jaguar but he makes the save and that's going to do it for the first period. So yet again, no goals against us in first period of play. 2 nothing game here still. Here comes Aiden Oliver breaking in. Look at the moves. He's a two-on-one situation. And nobody's back there with him. He fires. He scores. Aiden Oliver. Third goal in two games. This guy's absolutely on fire. Assist coming from Jusup Konstantinov. And wait... Just wait till you take a look at this replay. He's all smiles. I would be too. Wow, what a shot. And this guy had to go up against two other dudes. Putting the brakes on, making the moves all over. He's uh, He is impressing me so far in this gameplay here. Got a 3 nothing game. Here comes Oliver yet again with the behind-the-back move. And then still staying with it. Ties his man up in the boards. Trying to give Barnaby an opportunity to come help him, but... This could go to the wayside, and it does. So here's Ludwig again, a nice shot, but Corey Jaguar stands tall. And then again, on the follow-up shot, Jaguar makes another save. And take a look here. <laughs> Barnaby says, hey, did you know that I'm royalty? Did you know? Did you know that I'm royalty? Here comes Aiden Oliver again. Look at the speed. The moves. Aiden Oliver with a hat trick. Four goals for this man in two games 
I think you might have to consider moving him up a line. Right now, he is on line three. Maybe line four. I think you got to move him up maybe to line two. I think it's time. Goalie will be swapped out. And here comes Barnaby. Scores! And he's letting the goalie know I'm royalty. He picked this guy's pocket on the boards and then took it. Off to the races for another goal. It's five to nothing, guys. And an empty net situation for us because there is a delay, delayed penalty coming on against Seattle. And again, you just just more interference calls and slashing, actually. It's going to be a slashing call. I didn't really see a slash. I saw a little bit of an interference. But another big hit on the boards again. Here's Barnaby. Corrals it. Moving on in. Getting a shot off. He fires. He scores. <laughs> Barnaby two goals and it has been an absolute drubbing of Seattle right now we're getting all the breaks take a look at this it's just dribbled back in there so you know just fired at the net and good things happen it is six to nothing in the second period and here again is another goal John Borhoft it's just it's just easy it's just easy for the Huskies here against this WHL team you win the face-off, you move on in, find an open shot, get the goalie to go down, you fire it up. Easy, easy play. Hemingway, the defenseman, says, I want a piece of the action. Shot gets deflected. Here comes Taylor Jett, moving on in with the goal is Lasnadal. The perfect pass from Jett to Lasnadal, and Lasnadal finally gets his first goal in exhibition action, and it is now 8 to nothing. It's getting nuts, man. It's getting crazy out here. Nice pass. Good feed between these two guys. Nice to see the uh, chemistry happening between those guys. And take a look at Hemingway with the big hit. We are just not letting up in a 9-0 game. We are not quitting. It's full pressure. It's full on all the time. Aiden Oliver says, I'm not done yet either. The deke to move past his man in another goal. This goal has got to be upset. Regal Wood with the assist, and again, just take a look at the moves here. He got his man moving all over the place. Aiden Oliver with the perfect, perfect setup there. And then Lazenel again from Jet gets goal number two, and it is 11 to nothing. Yes, I know, guys. I'm pouring it on. Because you know what? At this point, I want to get a feel for these guys, too. I want to have some fun, too. I want to get it on in the action. Here comes Aiden Oliver again. Passes it up to Regal Wood with a goal, makes some snow angels. It's a party in Anchorage. Final score will be 12 to nothing. Yeah, we absolutely destroyed the Seattle Thunderbirds today. And you know, it was a good prepper. It was a really good prepper because now we got to face off against the former champions of the WHL, the Prince Albert Raiders. It's gonna be a tough match, man. But we're ready for it, obviously. 12 to nothing, final is your score here today. And take a look at the box score here. We got a bunch of goals there. Now, the reason why I wanted to use her that last couple minutes is because it was kind of getting out of hand, but at the same time, I did want to try to get a feel for the team and some of the players because for the most part, guys, I think in this series, I do want to have a healthy little balance between user gameplay and CPU gameplay. So I have not quite yet decided on how all that's going to work. So I'm, I'm kind of depending on you guys as well to kind of help me out with that and what you guys want to see. But let's get into the action here. We've got... The Huskies and the Raiders taking each other on, and it looks fairly competitive right now. Here is Aiden Oliver again, making moves from the backhand to the forehand again. He scores again. What is this, what is this guy? He's like 17. He's 17 years old. And he's, he's just making a statement here in these exhibition games, saying, I got to get moved up to line number one. I have to. Here's a shot on Neil Till getting his first start of exhibition action. And it's about time because he is supposed to be our starting goaltender. But again, we wanted to see Isaac Lopez. We wanted to see Corey Jaguer. And right now it's looking pretty solid here for Neil Till. Two straight shots. Here's another opportunity. And uh-oh. Oh, no. Did I speak too soon? And, you know, in all honesty, that was not a very good defensive effort on the other end there. So Eric Pierce is going to get his goal. And, I mean, you can see just guys getting turned around down there. And Matthew Hawk just kind of nowhere to be found. Kind of lost in no man's land here. And, again, just not very good defense. Again, got a couple shots on Till. 
And, it, you know, just guys wide open. Take a look at what Till's doing down here. we got to get the defensive game going here a little bit. Because right now, it's just getting way too many easy shots. Here's another chance. But this one's going to go off wide. But eight minutes left to go in the first period. And a, no, you never pass in the middle of your ice. Luckily, though, good def good defensive makeup there to make sure he didn't get the shot on net. And here's Matthew Hawk just taking out all of his frustration with the howitzer shot. But here's Juice Boxer from a nice pass from Hawk. He was almost able to get a good shot off. And now here come the Huskies again. Here's Regalwood. He's going to try to kick it out. Here to Aiden Oliver. Are you kidding me? With the snapshot. Regalwood to Oliver from Barnaby. I believe that is goal number six. <laughs> six or seven goals here for Aiden Oliver. This guy is just going off. It's like I can't even be impressed anymore. I just expect it. And then take a look at this hit by Fedorov. Huge hit on the boards. And that sets the tone again. For the Huskies, we have now taken the lead, and we are ready to protect it. This dude did the splits. Fedorov is no stranger to laying the big boomstick, and you can see the pain. Oh, that had to hurt, man. I don't even know if he got up after that. 2-1 to one here in the second period. Here's Miles Kinnick racing on in with the deflection goal. Miles Kinnick, wide open space to just roam in there the do-it-all defender fired it up fired it up high that's what I want to see Lasnadal do you know take no take no credit away from Miles Kinnick getting that shot off that was a really nice shot and it just deflected just enough where it was gonna it's gonna bounce right back into the goal so three nothing here 40 seconds left in the second period again some pretty solid defense all the way around and a kind of a little nudge there on juice boxer but we've got numbers we got a possible two-on-two two here. And nope, looks like, no, nope, it might have been a line change at that point. But trying to make something happen. And then Prince Albert just trying to get a shot off here. Are they going to get it? Yep, good save. Good save by Neil Till. And the second period is over. Three to one lead for your Huskies. Let's jump to that third period. And here's a wide open shot. Good pass by Prince Albert. And again, look at the big hits being laid on these Raiders by the Huskies. And again, another right into the slot. Guys moving on in. We're not doing a very good job of pinching on defense. Here's a goal by Leon Regalwood. And it's like, you know, I'm just, I just expect it now. I just expect us to score. Score at will. Regalwood with the goal. Oliver and Till. What, Neil Till had an assist here. You don't, you don't oftentimes see that with goaltenders. Take a look at his, this save here again by Till. He's been great tonight. He's had a lot more opportunities, a lot more shots against him than I feel like. Tough shots, too, that have been against him than Seattle had, than Kamloops had on Jaguar or Lopez. Five minutes to go here in the third, and then we've got this shot going to trickle on in by Linklater. It's now 4-2 to two Huskies. But I like our chances. I like our chances. It might be a little bit too late for Prince Albert. See that just kind of just ricocheted back in. But there you go. That's it. That's the game. 4-2 is your final score. We take down the former WHL champions, Prince Albert Raiders. Huskies are now 3-0 in WHL play. And that is going to do it for WHL play. Exhibition games are over. Which means one last thing. we got one more team to play. And it is going to be... A mystery NHL team. Who do you guys think it is in the live chat? I want, I'm anxious to hear what you guys think here. Aiden Oliver with two goals. Regal with a goal. Kinnick with a goal. And then that's about right. That's about what we're going to see. It's about 29 shots against him. Nil till 27 to 29. And there you go. There's your answer. So for those of you guys that guessed the Seattle Kraken, congratulations. You were right. So two expansion teams or two new teams in the NHL are taking each other on in this exhibition match to really determine what is the bar? Where are we at? How do we stack up against the NHL competition? Neil Till going to get the start here behind the pipes. And we are going to get underway here against the Seattle Kraken. Here at home, we have finally 
Been renamed Alaska, and I didn't change the freaking acronym. ACH, I gotta change that. ALK is what we gotta get to. <laughs> Mistake. I'm sure you guys will be fine with that. But Seattle is gonna pose us a little bit of a problem because obviously we've been playing up against WHL opponents, and we have not played an opponent like this. This is an NHL caliber type of team. Expansion in the NHL has not been like it used to be. I remember when expansion teams were god awful. Nashville Predators. Columbus Blue Jackets, Atlanta Thrashers. When I was a kid, they were so bad. But now, with the NHL rules of expansion, it's like you get to select, you get to select players from all the other 30 teams that are up for the expansion draft. So, you know, it's um, you can formulate a little bit better of a team right out of year one, right out of the gate, so that you're not struggling. But here is a shot again, Yarn Croak with the goal, and again, just Neil Till's getting kind of peppered there a little bit, and it was one of those things. In the last game that I saw against Prince Albert, it's our defense has got to learn to kind of pinch a little bit, kind of help our goaltender out. Don't necessarily screen him, but some of these goals are just we're giving up way too much ice in the middle, right? We gotta like we gotta flare these guys out a little bit, try to keep them away from our goaltender. And you see, like right now, both defenders are kind of collapsing into Neil Till. Some sometimes that strategy works, but oftentimes, you know, if you've got a two on two on two, you know, these are not situations you want to find yourself in. But here's Aiden Oliver taking a big hit, just working hard, working real hard to try to try to have that same success that he had last time. And here's a big hit on the boards. And again, guys, we are just we're just we're competing, but you can tell the skill gap is there. You can tell that it's there, where it wasn't really in WHL play. Here's an opportunity. Shot's going to go off wide. That was Borhoff with the shot. Matthew Hawk trying to work his way back on the back check. Another save here by Neil Till. 7.48 left to go, and here it comes a shot. That's going to go in again. 2 nothing. Seattle done with the snapshot, and it just beat Neil Till. We'll probably get a replay here and see what where this was located, but yeah, let's see. He was just screened. He was screened a little too much, and, you know, shot... On a left-hander, actually went to the right. So it's a pretty, pretty, pretty nifty little shot there by Seattle, and and, and done. And uh, it is two nothing here with three minutes and 45 seconds left. And here comes Tanev. He's trying to work his way in. And again, defense. You've got numbers here, guys. Get a little physical with him. There you go. Get a little physical. Try to challenge him there. You've got you've got help on the other end if he gets past you. But it's going to be the end of the first period. It is 2-0. You guys can see the number of face-offs being one. We are positive in that in that area. But we have not been good with the hits. We have not been good with getting shots off. We just have not had a complete game here today compared to what we were doing against WHL. And again, just more easy shots here. Moving in. Crashing the net. Look at this. I mean, just the pressure. The amount of pressure that Seattle is bringing. We can't corral the puck. That's Matthew Hawk. Again, with the puck control, and again, just missed block here, missed hit. And nobody's down there low trying to go get the puck. Lajanel says, that's fine, I'll take it. He's working his way back up. He's got some speed, but take a look at the humongous hit on Lajanel. And he somehow stays with it, gets a nice pass off to Borhoft, but he can't rattle it home. And Grubauer with the save. You know, that's going to that's, that's gonna go noticed for Peter Vasky in, in this club is is the way that Lajanel took that huge hit into the boards, but he still got up and tried to make a play. Wenberg coming in and getting the goal, and again, just another recovery issue with Neil Till. You know, this uh, this happened in the last game, so he's got to work on this, this recovery, because the rebounds, the, the, the little shots that are kind of coming off of him and kind of trickling back in are costing us goals here. It is 3-0. Lajanel still working hard. We get that shot off and it's going to be saved and still nothing. We can't get anything going here. Another bad turnover. And here comes Yarn Croak. Another goal. Four to Zippo. Seattle. And these fans are really letting us hear it. And I don't blame them. You know, expectations were high going into this game after blowing teams out in the WHL. And now we go up against actual competition and it has just not been easy. It is four nothing here in the second period, and there have just been no signs of getting it figured out. I mean, look at this. Just, again, poor defense back there right in the center of the goalie. 
You can't have it. Can't have it. It's five to nothing. Is Morgan Geeky? Yeah, we let a guy with the last name of Geeky score on us. Just how the game went, man. Just how the game went. Here's the shot by Barnaby. That's gonna miss, and that's gonna do it. Seattle with the win, five to nothing. And you know what? It's just one of those things. It's like I mentioned in the gameplay. You know, we just we gave up way too many easy looks for Seattle. And you just can't have that. You can't let your goalie have 41 shots against them. Take a look at that box score, guys. 41 total shots for Seattle. 26 for us. It's not like we didn't put pressure on Grubauer. You know, 26 shots is solid. But 41 shots for the opposing team? It's a lot, man. That's a lot. Nobody scored. No assists. There's your goalie update there. 30 shots against Neil Till, 11 against Corey Jaguar. So we did pull Neil Till to kind of give the guy a little bit of a break there. <laughs> he faced 30 shots. Jaguar faced 11, made all of 11 saves. You know, and you, you can you can you can look at that and you can think that you know is Jaguar better? I don't know. He played. He had a shutout against Seattle. Neil Till gave up some goals against Prince Albert. So there might be a little bit of a goalie competition. Happening here. Now, I know Peter Vasky likes Neil Till a little bit better. He leans towards Neil Till, but after this game, it's like you got kind of got to go with the hot hand, right? Jaguar makes 11 out of 11 saves against an NHL team. You got to shut out the last game he played. You know, is Jaguar the guy? Or is the belief in Neil Till going to win out? But either way, man, we'll figure that all out later. We're here. It's official. It's time. We're ready to get inside the NHL. Peter Vasky officially becoming accepted as a GM slash owner of the Alaska Huskies and its new NHL franchise. We're going to move Vegas over from the Pacific to the Central. It just makes more sense regionally. you got Alaska way up in that northwest part of the United States next to Western Canada. It just makes sense with Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, all those teams on that west side of the states and Canada. makes the most sense for travel and, of course, with the division alignment. As far as settings goes, we're going to put this at six minutes. We're not going to play on Superstar. We're going to play on All-Star. And then as far as the quick settings goes, some of these things like showing potential, fog of war, that's going to be left on default. Advanced settings will all be the same. I did not change anything here. So we got the sim engine shot frequency the same. We got sliders that are going to be the same based on the difficulty of All-Star mode. And uh, that's how we're going to get this thing started, man. So, of course, I did find some realistic sliders that I kind of do feel like I want to try eventually. If in gameplay, as a user, it just gets way too easy. I don't want this to be easy at all. I want this to be difficult. So if you guys are in for this, to have a bunch of losses, and even user gameplay that might not be top tier quality, it's just the way that the nature of the beast is for this series. It's not supposed to be where we're taking 65 overall players and making them into all-stars. It's just not, not the case, but this is going to be a little bit of a grind. It's going to be a little bit more difficult than other series that I've played in the past. And you can see the lines. You can see that we moved Aiden Oliver over from the third or fourth line up to the second. And then our captains. We've got the captain, Miles Kinnick, on defense. He's going to be our blue liner captain. He's about 23, 24 years old, and that seems like it makes the most sense. you got Ernest Hemingway, also a defenseman. He's going to be an assistant. And Seth Colley's also a little bit on the older side, but he does have some leadership background. And he's on the first line, and he's going to be kind of coaching up the two youngsters, Vidar Lasnadal and Taylor Jett. So I feel like it's a good, healthy little balance between trying to figure out who your captains are going to be and your assistants. And you, I just didn't want a young guy. Like, we have so many young guys on this team, 18, 17, 19-year-olds. Very tough to be a captain in those type of situations. I know that sometimes those guys can jump into those leadership roles, but, you know, with as young of a team as it is and everyone's still trying to figure out their game and still trying to figure out who they are as a player, it just makes the most sense, I think, to just give that, at least for year one, to some guys that have a lot of, little bit more experience under their belt. So, guys, that's going to do it for today's Alaska Huskies episode. Leave a like if you like this thing. I will see you guys later on this week for more. But please let me know in the comment section because we did have some nice balance between user gameplay against Seattle and then most of this, actually the majority of this, was CPU versus CPU. So there's pros and cons to each, but I kind of want to do get in here and, and, and play a little bit. You know, I want to get some user gameplay for you guys because I feel like that's what 
I mean, that's what most franchise modes are supposed to be about, is the user is playing the game. The, the one thing that sucks about user gameplay, and I'm, I'll admit this totally, is that eventually I'm going to get used to the game, right? And I'm probably going to end up winning more than I lose. And with 65 overall players, you don't want to win all the time. So I see that with my Giants episodes all the time. Like, I, I just, I have figured the game out. But eventually, you can make sliders so difficult that you just, it's impossible to win. So there's that fine line, there's that fine balance between trying to figure out what slider set makes the most sense for you as a user. And then of course, you're trying to figure out, you know, how can I limit myself? How can I handicap myself to not win a bunch of games? And you know, people just don't like to see you lose all the time either. So there's just this give and take as well for being entertaining content creator and then just not entertaining people because you win too much. So it's it's really it's really tough. The other con of user versus CPU is that when you're playing with the team, you end up liking certain plays, you end up liking certain ways to move the puck, and you know even in football, you call certain plays that work for you and bring you the most success. It's just the same thing with players too. I might end up scoring a bunch of goals with Laz Nadal and Jet, but I don't score with Aiden Oliver, and he was a beast in CPU versus CPU. Right, so there's always that pro and con as well. The one thing that sucks about CPU versus CPU, you never get to see the user. It's it's just just the computer playing itself. Like what what fun what fun is that? <laughs> All the time. So maybe we can come up with some rules in the comment section. You know, let me know. Post them in the comment section, and uh, maybe I only play against my divisional opponents. Maybe they have to be above 500 is when the next time we play them, I play that game. And that's the gameplay that we get. Everything else is CPU versus CPU. These are just ideas. Maybe you guys have some. Post them in the comments below. I will read all of them. I promise you. Because I really do want to have a healthy balance of computer versus computer, AI and AI versus user and AI together. So I just, I feel like that would be a kind of a cool little hybrid type of series that really brings out the best of this series that it could possibly get to. So guys, like I said, leave a like if you like this thing. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you guys later on this week for the next Alaska Huskies episode where we'll be taking on the Anaheim Ducks. But it's up to you, CPU versus CPU, or user versus CPU. I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, thanks for watching, and peace.